Say hello. Bear with me. So, hi everyone. It's great to be here. So, as Ashley said, I'm Sarah. I'm a community musician. I live in Gateshead, North East England. I'm originally from down south, though, like near Luton, hence the actor. So, as a community musician, I'm a workshop leader. Yep. <laughs> a performer, composer, visiting lecturer, <laughs> inclusion trainer, researcher on a bit of everything, ready. And I'm also disabled. Whoop, whoop. So, my main disability that I've had all my life is cerebral palsy, which is really goddamn hard to say. So my CP affects my left side and my speech. I think you guessed that bit. And when I was 19, I developed another disability because one is not enough. So it is a movement disorder across my whole body. So musical statues is the worst game I've ever had to endure in my life. Um, about two years ago, just before the world went mad, and I had to have a, a brain operation to help reduce the uh, involuntary movements that I had in my body. Um, it helped, hence why I'm not like YMCA to you today. Um, so today, I now have a battery in my chest wires up my head and two electrodes in my brain. So, robot, basically. Which is great, except when you go through airport security. It's really kind of weird to explain what is inside you. Um, thankfully, it has reduced a lot of my movements. I will be honest with you, unfortunately, it didn't help as much as we hoped. We hoped it would stop the spread of my dystonia. Unfortunately, it's possibly slowed it down. So the likelihood is that eventually I will uh, lose use of my hands and other limbs um, and not be able to do certain things. But the way that I see it is that I am not there yet. I am here. I am doing what I love. For as long as I can, I'm going to do that. I'm never going to stop until literally my body says... <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not... <laughs> so, my life has been a bit of a challenge due to various disabilities. Um, and so, um, today in my work, I share my experiences and reflections on what I went through in the hope of showing ways to becoming more of an inclusive society, especially for disabled people. So going back to my school days, school was hell. <laughs> um, and there was a variety of challenges for me over the years. So I was in mainstream education all of my life. So I was the odd one out. The one who a gimpy hand. <laughs> that, no speech. Um, and I was the only disabled person. And it was obvious that I was disabled. So that ultimately led to bullying and name calling. And why, why do you sound like that? Why do you act like that, why can't you do certain things? Now, the way that I see the challenges that I face, there's three kind of elements to it. Speech challenge, physical challenge, and the taboo around disability. So, with my speech, people assume that I am stupid. Or, they don't, or that I don't know as much as I do. They sometimes talk to who I'm with, rather than me, 
Hey, look, I'm here. Got a voice. Might be dodgy. Go, go on. Or they simply just ignore me entirely. At school, I had a most severe speech impediment uh, than today. Uh, we're not doing charades today, which is great. Not yet, anyway. Um, unfortunately, peers and teachers didn't acknowledge or understand the challenges that I endured. Um, my drama teacher thought that I put this on to get out of her lessons. I mean, if this is acting, I should have an A star in drama. I don't. <laughs> Another teacher who I asked a question to at the end of a lesson looked at her watch and said, how long are you going to be? You're wasting my time because I started a question. So I really wanted to speak up or say anything as I was being judged, laughed at, or just ignored. There were physical challenges too, especially in music settings. My left side is stiff, and as a kid was more so than today. My parry teachers were amazing, but there were other teachers that were not. <laughs> Some said to me, I don't know how to teach that, because that is an entire separate entity to the rest of me, right? And I was in the school band, and I needed more time to learn a beat on the drum kit to adapt it to suit my needs. And I was told I was holding up the entire band, so I got put on triangle. Because that's inclusive, isn't it? Ding! I was told as a teenager I would never be a proper musician because I'm disabled. I mean, what even is a proper musician? So all of that meant that I lost a lot of confidence. And lastly, the taboo around disability. I've realised that over the years, people don't always know how to approach disability can talk to or around disabled people. It's seen as a taboo subject. They become awkward around us. There's this perception also that when people hear music and disability, they assume music therapy. I don't do music therapy, I never had music therapy. I'm a musician, I also happen to have a disability too. I've been told, how can you have a career as a musician? You're disabled. Surely it's just a hobby. Blah, blah, blah. But also, removing my disability from the equation, I'm also female. I play drums. and grew up going to school on a deprived area of my hometown. And so I was, girls can't play drums. Oh, yeah. Watch this. So obviously all of these barriers um, meant that life was quite a challenge. So although there was a lot of negative experiences, I tried to turn it around and use it to make a change. So when I was 18, I went to university and I studied community music at undergrad level and had the joy of a dissertation to write, the joy. For this, I went on to develop a, when I wrote this, I think I thought I'd have to say it, I developed a pedagogical <laughs> that approach to work with people with SEMD based on an autoethnography. Basically, I researched me, because <laughs> I'm um, I called this approach a way, not the way. And it's based on four elements I'm going to share with you today. And hopefully, you may be able to relate this to some of your work. So, it starts with the relationship, which is the most important part. We <laughs> have conversations that I've had today over a relationship. And it needs to be built on trust and understanding. 
the relaxing air, comfortable setting, allow students to open up about their challenges. It's a two-way process between the teacher, possibly yourselves, and the students. As Freire states, you may or may not know Freire, he has this um, idea of teacher-student, student-teacher. So, as teachers, you bring the musicality, the musicianship, your skills as a musician, facilitator, and the student will teach you how they can play. So that's the student teacher. And so the position of teacher becomes interchangeable. Um, so future session, ugh, session, future things can be more productive. So the next set is motivation. Having a positive setting means that your students will be more Whoa, comfortable to try new things. For me, music is my escape. Um, for a lot of us, I think it's the same. When we play, we enjoy it, it feels good. We do it because it's nice. And that's intrinsic motivation. <laughs> Put that one up. So as students or musicians or anyone develops their musical skills, Others start to notice, and that builds confidence. We've all been on the shooting, on stage, and you have applause at a concert or performance. How nice is that feeling? And that's the external motivation, that you want to do it again. And that's the extrinsic motivation. But ultimately, students are seen for what they can do, not what they can't do. My notes are gone, hang on. <laughs> So then you get criticism of musicality. I can't type in my hash code. Criticism of musicality. So as musicians, I hope you agree, it's really important to receive constructive criticism. Within this ability, it is no different, but it's really important to criticise the musicality, not the disability. And this is only achieved with that high relationship and understanding and conversations between the students and yourselves. Together, students and teachers feel on their knowledge of what is achievable. The teacher can push their students to their highest potential without overdoing it, causing injury or low self-esteem. And at the same time, developing their musicianship and being the best musician that they can be. Lastly is A way and not the way. Everybody learns differently. It would be really boring if we all learned the same. For those of us that have disabilities, some activities may need to be adapted to find a way to play and participate. But it's really important to consider the challenges that they face, which again is only achieved with a high relationship open conversations. Between the student and the teacher, the outcome is going to be the same, what you're aiming to do. How they get there is totally up to them. But given time and space together, you will achieve a way to get to that outcome. So how did I get here? <laughs> Quite a generic start. I studied GCSE and A-level music. Yeah. I did my grade eight uh, when I was 18, which is great because I needed that to get into university uh, points because my A-levels were not good. <laughs> um, so, and then when I was uh, in 2018, 23, four, no, I don't know, too old, I went on to study community music um, for master's level. So academically, I did all right. Outside of the classroom, it was where I really blossomed. Obviously, you've had my school challenges. Um, so outside of that, I was a participant at a local music school as a teenager. The percussion teacher who taught me then left. 
So I was asked if I would lead uh, some sessions. So I started teaching tune uh, concussion. I also started teaching drum kit to a couple of ch children when I was 18. After graduating in 2015, I got my first job at Sage Gazer, which is where I actually studied my undergrad degree. So I worked on an SEMD project with um, young, and young adolescents with additional needs. Um, in 2016, I attended my first ever conference where I shared A-way, not Lee-way, for the first time. And I was so nervous. I'd never talked out loud, like, ever. Um, especially as it was an interna international conference. And I was 21, surrounded by PhD students, doctors, professors, and just really smart people um, who I'd spent three years Exciting in essays, Phil Mullen, <laughs> one of them. Um, and in 2017, I then started my freelance business and started teaching around the country with Greek music and other organisations. My first freelance adventure was with more music, actually. Um, after some of their team uh, attended my session at the conference in 2016. Uh, in 2017, I also got funding to tour, uh, to develop a show uh, at the stage on music, disability and humour, called Twitch. Uh, it. Um, so it was a success. And so a year later, I applied for more funding and got funded to tour Twitch across uh, the whole of the UK. Um, so I was networking a lot over the years and getting recognised. From 2018, I was asked to lecture at Sunderland University, and today I teach at other universities. I was in... Aberdeen on Monday, so mad travelling around that I get to do. I'm um, a board member of SoundSense and other organisations and being in conversation with the Department for Education around the NPME too. I'm not going to try and say all that. Um, so what can you do? to encourage other young people to excel in music, especially disabled people. If you can, implement a way, not the way. Have conversations. Ask questions. Don't assume that you know everything, especially around somebody's access needs. Admit that you don't know. Admit that you don't know everything. And you will probably make mistakes. That is okay. That is how we learn. And as a disabled person, I'd rather you ask me, what can I do to help you, rather than guessing. Because nine times out of ten, what you think is complete opposite to what I need. Be prepared to be surprised. Young people amaze us every day. I'm working with um, children in care aged 10 to 14 and we're writing a piece on Ukraine at the moment. And honestly, their knowledge blew me away. They started singing words, propaganda, democracy, Remember, I can't even say them. And their understanding and using it and contextualising it today. So don't underestimate young 
people, especially the disabled people, being the teachers, the adults, that I still remember, not the drama teacher, <laughs> don't, be, don't be that. Um, being the teachers that I can remember positively. If we all work together, we can make the world a little bit more inclusive for all of us that are in it. We need rare models, and I do what I do today because I know there are many me out there in school who can do amazing things too. I always think if I saw someone like me when I was younger, I would know I can do it. I can be that person too. I never had that, so I'm starting to be that person. This is what drives me to do what I do and to try and create a more inclusive society. And I happen to do this through music <laughs> and the passion that I have for music. But at the end of the day, I'm just living my life. Nothing special. Together, we can all make a change. So let's find these young people and nurture them. Give them a voice. They are our future. Thanks.